Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Welcome back, wildlings. We think of legends in modern times as being part of cultural heritage, teaching values or lessons important to certain peoples through metaphor or example. But what if some of those tales are simply reports of things that actually happened? Tonight's story, Forgotten by Time, from the Creepypasta Wiki. Time doesn't stop. No matter what you do, you can't stop time from flowing. It just won't happen. But what time does do is forget. The bad events become bad memories, which become bad dreams, which fade into the smallest of dark stains on history. This is good. It's natural. This buries things that should be buried, that must be buried for the world's sake. And sometimes the worst thing you can do is go around digging those things up, making time remember what should be forgotten for eternity. I live in New Mexico. Out in the country, I never get bored with the outdoors. There's so many weird rock formations to climb, so much odd geography to explore, but the one thing that interests me most about where I live is the archaeology. Hundreds and hundreds of years ago, the area was colonized by Native Americans, known as the Anasazi. The word is actually Diné. Navajo, meaning the ancient ones or ancient enemy. They built cities out of stone, sometimes sprawling across the ground, sometimes built into the sides of cliffs. I saw some of the biggest ones over at Chaco Canyon. That's what captured my interest to begin with. If you ever see them, you'll know what I mean. There's just something odd about those strange circular structures that fills you with a sense of awe. But by now, those cities have been ground down by the wind. They're little more than ruins anymore. That's because the people abandoned them long ago. No one knows what happened to the people who lived there. They just all vanished, leaving nothing but ruins and a few pottery shards. There have been theories, of course, that it was drought or famine that drove them away, but I never really liked that explanation. It just didn't seem right. Well, one week, after my 16th birthday, I went out and got my driver's license. I was thrilled. Finally. Freedom. Total freedom. That weekend, uh, myself and some of my friends decided to go out on a camping trip into the hills. So that Saturday morning, I picked everyone up and headed out. After a few hours of driving, we found a place that was secluded enough without looking like it was protected by some sort of national park. Stopping the car, we decided to stretch our legs a little before setting up camp. We were parked at the end of a small valley with hills rising up on three sides around us. Deciding to explore a little, we climbed up the nearest one. Getting to the top, we were greeted with an amazing sight. It was a large ring of hills with an enormous depression in the center, and rising out of that depression was the oddest mountain that I'd ever seen. The half on the far side of us was normal, rising up at a steep slope. Facing us, however, the mountain extended out into a huge overhang, obscuring our vision of what lay beneath it. We took one look at each other, and then started sliding our way down toward it. Upon reaching the bottom, we were greeted by an even more impressive sight. It was a huge Anasazi city, spread out under the overhang. Better yet, it was almost completely undamaged, located in such a place as to be perfectly sheltered from the wind. Looking at it, I knew, I just knew that we were the first people to see it in hundreds of years. As excited as I was, something made me hesitate to explore it. I don't know what it was exactly, but after a few seconds, it passed and... I was jogging forward into the ruins. Seeing the city as it had been originally built was simply amazing. I thought of how useful it would be to study their culture this way. One thing that put me off, though, 
were the uh, the skeletons. Human bones littered almost every floor that we came across. I didn't know enough to be able to determine what killed all of these people, but it looked like they all died at once. In my concentration, I realized that I had gotten separated from my friends. Calling out, I got no answer. I started walking through the ruins, looking for them, then jogging, then running. Coming around a corner, I ran nearly smack into them. They were standing in the doorway to the largest structure that I had seen so far, staring in. Annoyed, I pushed past them to see what they were looking at, and regretted finding it. The skeletons in this room were intact. I wish they hadn't been. That way my brain could still make up excuses. Most of them were still definitely human. The other ones, though, I didn't know what they were. It was as if a human skeleton had been partially molded into that of a coyote. The, the, the skulls were elongated, the spines stooped, their fingers were clawed. In the center of the room was a jet black pedestal, and on that lay another skeleton. None of us really wanted to go in, but we did anyway. Walking toward the bizarre skeletons, I almost tripped over a strange rod. Picking it up, I couldn't tell what it was or what it was made out of. I asked my friends to come look at it, and one of them took it. As a joke, he jabbed it into the chest of my oldest friend, Pete, who was standing next to him. Not expecting the attack, Pete stumbled backwards and tripped, landing on the pedestal. He didn't move again. The guy who had jabbed him walked over to help him up, rod still in hand. And as soon as he touched Pete and the rod touched the pedestal, there was a flash of light and a rushing sound. Clearing my vision, I saw that Pete was moving now. He was writhing in pain, and once my hearing came back, I realized that he was screaming as well. The guy who had jabbed him moved to help him, but he jumped back as Peter rolled onto the floor, scattering bones. As he thrashed, I saw that his body was starting to warp, and then without warning, he just stopped. He lay still. Looking at him in horror, I realized that his features matched the weird skeletons next to him. He had somehow been transformed. Pete stared up into the eyes of the guy who had, by accident, done this to them, and what he did next I don't like to think about. I had watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but that was nothing compared to what happened next. I didn't stop to think, I, I just ran. Sprinting through the ruined buildings, I heard another person yelp as he went down, then another. Then it was just me and what used to be Pete. Bursting out into the sunlight, I sprinted to the base of the hill. Turning back, I saw Pete standing in a doorway watching me. Before my eyes, his body twisted and shrunk until he just looked like an ordinary coyote. I may have been fascinated, but I'm not stupid. I took a step backwards and turned to run again. The coyote snarled and then bolted towards me. Whimpering, I scrambled up the hill, but the coyote was faster, much faster. By the time that I'd reached the top, it was upon me. I could feel its body slam into my back, sending us both rolling down the other side of the hill. Twisting to face the thing, I pulled my arm back and just by instinct slammed my fist into its muzzle. It yelped in pain. I tried to hit it again, but this time the thing was expecting my blow. Just before my fist made contact with its face, the coyote opened its mouth and bit down on my wrist. Yelling, I smashed my head into it, making it let go. We hit the bottom of the hill and rolled apart. Struggling to my feet, I saw the coyote twisting and warping back into Pete's form. He was scratched up and his nose was broken, and he was wearing nothing but a coyote pelt wrapped around him. Jack, please help me, he moaned. 
I walked over and started to stoop down to help him up. Then I saw his eyes. They were still coyote eyes. I flinched back and with a snarl he lunged at me. Only now remembering the knife in my belt, I pulled it and stabbed it into his chest. His body shuddered and then simply went still. I stepped back as his skin began to crumble into dust. When it finished, it blew away leaving nothing but a skeleton of a human crossed with a coyote. The rest of the story is, uh, frankly, uninteresting. Me dealing with the police and, later, the therapists, mostly. I told them that a madman in the hills had killed my friends. I gave them the wrong location for where it happened. They gave me an investigation for being the only one to have survived. I think those ancient cities died for a reason. I think that humans aren't ready for the kind of magic that had been discovered in them. The magic that lets people transform into those things. I know now they're called skinwalkers. I didn't used to believe in magic at all. Monsters, the paranormal. But now, I know the truth about what some of them are. My name is Jack Davis, and I intend to keep that truth from hurting anyone else. Well, either they really did run into something, or someone's been watching too much Supernatural on Netflix and Toke Night. Stay scary, my wildlings. For fuck's sake, don't whack your buddy with the ancient relic, and make the most of your nights. <laughs>